Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis. Welcome to episode 72. Now this week, I'm not going to do a complete retouch from start to finish for you, but I am going to show you just a few of the techniques that I used on this recent picture just here of this military character. I want to show you how I uh, use some techniques just to make him look a lot more powerful and dynamic, how I created the background, and just a couple of uh, extra little things in there as well. Now it's a very short video. Some of you may know some of the techniques already, which is great, but there'll be some of you out there who definitely don't know them, which is kind of doubly great but uh, it's a very short video nice and quick nice and fast just enough time for you to have a few sips of your coffee and we'll be done but uh, enjoy it Okay, so first things first then, this kind of gives you an overview of what the setup was here. I didn't actually uh, have a very, very wide shot so you could see everything, but you can see that we've got our character here, which is my friend Barry. He's basically stood in his back garden with a 175 centimeter Elinchrom Rotolux Octa behind them. I get nothing for telling you that. It's just a really great modifier that I like using in tight locations outdoors or maybe in gyms, because it gives you such a small footprint area. You don't take up too much space, but then you can later on make it look as if you had a large uh, white seamless background. So you can see here's the picture of Barry kind of fairly wide. You can just see the edges of the octa. I then zoomed in just a little bit tighter so that I've got space above his head and either side because then when we go over into Photoshop we can then increase that white area and make it look like a studio shot. First things first though, let's have a look at this. We've got this white area around him. I want to make sure that it's purely white so I'm going to go to the window menu and choose the info palette just here where we have the R RGB. Now I'm really hoping you can see this on your screen, but in this top left hand corner we've got RGB. And when I put my cursor over the actual picture you can see we get readings. Now 255 is giving us pure white and I can see when I drag around the image just on the outsides of Barry, just in this area here, we're getting 255 showing up. So it's pure white. I'm kind of hoping you can see that on the screen. So basically this, all this means is then I can get my crop tool and rather than cropping inwards, I'm going to come outwards to increase the size of the actual canvas area here. We get the grid up here as well, which is kind of handy for when we like working with the rule of thirds. So I'll kind of drag it outwards so that I get Barry here with the rule of thirds over on the right hand side. I might take it just a little bit more to the right. When we get it where we want, we press enter or return to commit that in. And all I need to do now then is fill in these empty pixels, this transparent area on either side of the picture. So I'm going to add a, a layer below our picture of Barry here over in the layers panel. Now rather than me just clicking to add a new layer, and drag it below, which is kind of tedious, what I can do is just hold down my command or control key and just click on the new layer icon and it adds it in directly for me. All right, so we can either use a keyboard shortcut to fill in this white or we can go to edit, fill and from the drop down menu here just choosing the contents white and click OK. So now we have a much bigger canvas area. It kind of looks like he was shot with a white seamless background. Now there's absolutely no point in me keeping both these layers. So let's just go to the fly out menu here at the top of the layers panel and just choose flatten image. All right, so the next thing I want to do is make Barry look just a little bit bigger. He's a big lad already, but I want to just increase his width just a bit more to give him a bit more power. Now, this is a technique that I use a lot on pictures when I'm working with bodybuilders, fighters, kickboxers, and all those kind of people, basically physique people to give him a bit more power. So the way we do this is I'm going to create a copy by pressing down my command or control key, pressing J to create a copy in the layers panel there of my original picture. Then I'm going to go the long way around to edit and free transform. Now, when we do this, we get the transform handles going around our picture, we also get some information at the very top of the screen in the options area just here. Now this kind of shows us what the width and the height and the angle and this kind of stuff. Now if I just highlight this part here, here we've got the width, it's shown it's at 100% and the height's 100%. But in between this we've got this little chain icon. Now at the moment we can see it's not been depressed so it's not on. If I did click it down, when I use these transform handles here and drag outwards you'll see that basically the height and the width grow in the same proportions. Now I don't want to do that. I only want to work on the width. So I'll make sure that that chain icon is not turned on. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to come into the width little uh, dialog box here, the text box, and I'm just going to change it from 100% to 103%. And then I'm going to press the little tick or press enter or return. And now you'll see when I turn that copy layer on and off, it's made him look a little bit wider. It's only really subtle, 
but it actually does add a little bit more width to him, but it doesn't look out of the ordinary. In fact, when I turn it off to see the original, it almost looks to me like the original has been made narrower and the actual one I've made wider is the what it should be. So that's the first one. That's one little technique I use. One thing about that is you can't go too far. Never go more than increasing it by maybe 5%. So don't go more than 105% because then it'll start to disfigure and will not look realistic. 3%, that's a pretty good angle. Where, that's a pretty good number where to go to. All right, so when I photographed Barry, I also photographed him from low down, aiming up, which is generally the way that we photograph male physiques that we want to give them a lot more impact. But the problem with that is I find if I don't get them to lean forward at the waist at the same time, it almost makes them look as if they're leaning back just a little bit. They look bigger, but they definitely seem to me to be leaning backwards. So one way I correct that, again, to make it look a little more, more powerful, impactive in the picture, is I go to the edit menu, choose transform, and then we're gonna go to perspective. And again, we get our transform handles around at the top here. I'm gonna hold down my alt or option key, click on the one in the top left-hand corner, and just drag outwards and you can see that the right hand corner also drags out in the same amount so they almost make him look as if he's starting to lean forward like I would have done if I'd thought about it when we were doing the photo shoot getting him to just lean forward slightly at the waist now I'm only going to take that just a little bit as well something to around about there they'll yeah, do press enter or return to commit that and we can see now the difference that's made already so just little things making a big difference so we've worked on the background we've actually made him wider and then we've made him look as if he's leaning further forward. Now the final thing I'll show you, because like I said, this is just a really quick video just to show you some of the things we did. In the actual final picture, you can see that Barry here has been given a beard, but he doesn't actually have one in real life. I'm sure he can grow one, but in the picture I wanted him to have a beard. Add a beard. Now I'm not going to steal Aaron Blaze's thunder here, but to do that, I basically used the new brushes that Aaron has actually created and has for sale on his website here, uh, in a website called Creature Art Teacher. But I'd kind of show you when you download the brushes and install them, there are all these ones just over here in the brushes panel. There's so many to play with. But you can see, if I just zoom in, I've only got black foreground color, but you can see the kind of effect that this does here. I absolutely love these. Brushes are just such a powerful thing within Photoshop. I highly recommend you, when you're having a bit of playtime in Photoshop, play around with brushes. The creative possibilities you can actually start to do within your pictures just goes tenfold when you start working with brushes. There's so much you can do, but look at this, just simple brush strokes here creates the bristles, and that is exactly what I use to actually create the beard on Barry. Now, uh, like I said, I'm not gonna steal Aaron's thunder. If anyone's gonna be an expert in brushes, it's Aaron. Uh, so go to the website here, creatureartteacher.com. If I just click, you can see the brushes advertised here, but you also go to where it says tutorials and lessons at the top of the screen. Come down to where it says brush and textures and scroll down. And here you can see this cartoon picture here of Aaron himself. Click on that, and that's where you can start to see all those brushes. There's lots of other brushes that Aaron's created, but if I just click on these to bring them up, you'll see that here's the brushes, but he's also added a little video in there to show you exactly how to use them. So it's a really quick video. Hope you liked it. Uh, make sure, if you haven't already, you subscribe to the channel. But that's it for this week. I'll see you next time.